Welcome to the Houston interview series, Health Life Design. Well, today we're talking not just to one person, but to three. We have three panelists who are going to be advising you and I about how to get the best price for your property. And of course, we have, can I just say, property stylist extraordinaire, Marina Watson. Hi, how are you going? Very well. We have Magdi representing our finance finances of the world. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> and Kim, you're here to tell us how to sell our properties. Yes. Absolutely. So tell me about your business. So I set up KD Property Advisory, which is actually representing buyers and actually helping them make smart investment choices, uh, whether it's in the residential or commercial space. Uh -huh. So yeah, so really looking at um, getting them clear on their brief, providing a structured approach yes, um, and getting the market ready so they can step forward. Yeah, yeah. Maybe finance? Yeah, so we're, predominantly it's an accounting and tax firm, but we've also helped clients get finance and mortgages to make sure that they yeah. get in the right deal. So. Yeah. And Marina, of course, you're a property stylist. Yes, and uh, by, um, uh, you know, being in the industry for now uh, many years, in my own business for 18, and uh, property styling is one of those um, industries that's very important for real estate, for property, and I've added... Um, uh, interior design and renovations to that as well because it's all about adding value mm -hmm. to your home and being different yeah. to everyone else. Yeah. So Marina, what, what does a problem, if I was to engage you yeah. in styling the product, what do you actually do for the yeah. client? Uh, with um, my um, uh, consultation, I talk to them about their renovations, getting that uh, sorted and then finally do the property styling. So I mm. actually do both now. And the renovations is really important because you can um, upgrade a kitchen quite inexpensively. You can add value to that space. You can okay. um, advise on um, uh, the initial look of, of making the interior look its absolute best. Yeah, so I just you're... did popcorn, popcorn ceilings, you know. So if you have things like that, which is um, um, it, essential, it affects your ultimate uh, impression mm. so you know so you're an interior masker yeah it is about <laughs> it is about adding value to the to the space it's about bringing the best features out of it yes. adding value um, showing how the interior can look yes. because that's the property styling yeah. side of it so that people can see themselves in that space mm -hmm. and um, and as a property stylist it's all about um, making it look its best, mm. how you can take the, you know, centimetres mm, mm, that, because uh, mm. there's small so it's, spaces it's creating and large the illusion spaces. To, to get the best possible it's, result. It's all yeah. about illusions, actually, yeah. and, and making it a comfortable home. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But so that it stands out mm. and, and competes mm. with all the other homes that are on the internet or mm. in, the, in the paper. Mm, absolutely. Magdi, <laughs> finance, it's, it's such an important element to, to the whole exercise. Do, do we make sure our finances are in place before we start to look um, or at what stage or I'm asking you multiple questions here because we, we tend to get it wrong. What's your advice with that? My advice is always to get your you know, ducks lined up as they say. So get your finances in order, see what your borrow, maximum borrowing capacity is so you can not overstretch yourself. Mm. Um, we've also had clients you know, bid and buy without finances and, and it's, it's sort of like sometimes a little bit hard because mm. they might not get the right finance and they're rushing around. So yeah, getting, yeah. being being prepared mm. is preparation, preparation, preparation. What about auction? I mean, we, it's auction's hard because you don't always know what the price, what you're, gonna, what you're, what you're bidding for. Um, True, but you can still get a guide and see what it's roughly gonna be able to get yeah. um, loan for so yeah. that you're not overextending. And then yeah. it still comes down in this market down to valuation as well. So there's still like a many elements of um, risk. So I wouldn't be advising clients to really Mm. go to their maximum, like mm. to have some reserves, mm. not rely on the bank for everything. So mm. Mm. that's why I say preparation and yeah. be prepared for the for the day, yeah. really. It's just as important. What are some of the things that people do wrong? Well, one, like going to auction without finance would be one. That, <laughs> yeah, wrong. Without finance, clearly. Yeah. Um, depends. If it's, if it's like an owner-occupier property, then I guess what they do wrong usually is they overpay because they put the emotional part into the home, it's, it's mm. nicely laid out and they really want to buy that home. Um, with, it, with, with investments, um, it's not, they can still overpay if they're not, if they're not careful, so mm. yeah. Mm. Kim, we're in an incredibly volatile time at the moment and uh, you know, the property market is up and down and some say it's more down than it, than it should be. 
What's your advice to anyone that's thinking of actually selling at the moment? John, there, there appears to be an oversupply of buyers in the marketplace and less sellers. Um, so it's creating a lot of competition mm. um, when you're looking at purchasing a property. Um, it's really looking at the tangible aspects that are attached to a property. And if there's a number of tangible aspects attached to a property, mm. you're going to get more competition from buyers. Mm. And then you're going to see values then increase. And I'm seeing that even in this current market, that properties are going above what they're actually worth, mm. which is the emotional part that people are prepared to pay because they've been in the market looking to buy mm. the right property for the last 18 months or two years. Mm. Um, and so we're still seeing that energy, mm. um, but there's also the uncertainty as well around where property prices will go. And it is the unknown at this stage mm. as to how far that will stretch. Yeah, yeah. Mag, do you, if somebody's finding it hard to get into the market, the property market, clearly, and interest only is the only option, what's your opinion on that? Interest only is not a bad option if that's all they can they can get. Um, of course, they'll never pay off the, the loan if they leave it for too long. Mm. Um, good for investment loans if they were, like, want to maximise their tax, mm. but perhaps not so good if they want to own occupy it because they'll never get the equity in the in the property mm. if they mm. leave as interest So it's, it's not a bad idea, but it's limited time. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Marina, um, there's a school of thought, um, personal photographs in a property and, and those that aren't. I mean, everyone's children are the best looking children. That's right. You don't do Do we personalise it? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. No personal um, photos of the family because you want the the new people that are inspecting the, the home and apartment to see themselves and their family there. Mm. So it makes sense to keep that quite neutral. Mm. Um, same with religious temples or or any religious artifacts or anything that, that gives you a very specific understanding of who um, the owners are. Mm. You want to neutralise that so that it becomes, um, you know, more acceptable, the space becomes more acceptable for new people coming into the home. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair enough. Um, Kim, auction or for sale? What's your opinion? It's an interesting question, John. Um, some people find the auction process really overwhelming and a lot of people are not putting in place a strategy mm. before they actually turn up to auction. And it's really, really important to actually have a strategy in place. Mm. And if you are feeling really overwhelmed about the auction process, mm. take someone along who you know who is either a friend Mm. Um, who can actually support you in that space, mm. who doesn't hold any sort of lack of you know, confidence in actually putting up their hand. Because mm. it's really, um, you know, you're on the spot. Um, it's quite an overwhelming experience for some people. Yeah. Um, whereas the for sale private treaty process is far more simple. Mm. Um, you kind of put in an offer, it's either accepted mm. or, you know, you get some feedback from the agent as to where it's at and whether or not you have to increase your price. Sure. So it's a little bit more simpler and it's not being on the spot. Yeah. And you don't have someone who's like yourself, John, standing in front, facilitating yeah. and calling out, you know, numbers. Because yeah, um, yeah. I think the other big part, which I think a lot of people are finding difficulty, is looking at the value of yes. a property mm. and then actually integrating that mm. and actually going, would I be prepared to go to that price? Mm, mm. Um, and, you know, this is the price that I'm prepared to go to and mm. actually going, right, because I'm going to be going into debt mm. potentially. Mm. You know, I mean, Magdi's, you know, talking to people about debt, mm. um, but there's also capital growth, mm. um, you know, within a property. And there's also, you know, loans, which obviously you can mm. pay off the mm. principal mm. in order to then increase that equity mm. to mm. actually, you know, finally own it. Yeah. Um, on that, Magdi, the Australian culture, been, we've mm. been brought up to, to live in our asset. Um, but what's your opinion on buying a property and, and renting somewhere else and, and offsetting that? I think it's just important not to tie up all your money in a property because the bills still keep coming in. Mm. Like, yeah, and so you, you don't want to be like strapped financially. But no one wants to have like a, a luxurious house that they mm. can't afford really to live in. So I think it's, we've got to really manage that cash flow mm. and the kids at school or private school and yeah. all those expenses. And as they get older, they get more expensive. Mm. So mm. It's, it's about like really knowing what your budget is mm. and then trying to Yeah, we haven't to got it. this right, have we? Mm. We, we? We're in our biggest part of our debt life when we have our children and we're educating them like the formula doesn't work does it <laughs> on reflection <laughs> how do we get that wrong but more the point we're here to make sure that we get it right and get the best price for our property yeah. marina color what about color <clears throat> i love color I've all the different walls are different mm. colors they're all complementary mm. 
Okay, not me in particular, colour. I've just used that scenario. Do, yeah. do we strip the colour or do we make it neutral? Again, um, I do like colour and I do use colour. Mm. I use colour in um, cushions, in paintings, in rugs, mm. uh, and I keep the majority of other things fairly mm. neutral. Mm. And that's only to, again, to appeal uh, to the maximum, mm. um, you know, amount of people mm. that are... Mm. That are um, uh, looking for properties for their, you know, for themselves mm. and um, for their children. Mm. That's what happens too. And so that, um, you know, we're now finding that, um, you know, we need to be creative. Mm. Um, we need to stand out. Mm. So c colour is a way to do that. Mm. Mm. And um, and I'm all for being more bold mm. than mm. not because it's if, about standing out. Yeah, if it creates the statement, <clears throat> that's effectively what it is. Not, it it, not Not to be offensive, but to create the... The statement of, of, yeah. of, of appeal. But you yeah. can also do it with texture. Mm. So you can layer the textures, you can layer the objects, mm. and um, it's all about um, creating that appeal. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, what they uh, miss is proportion. Mm. And mm. proportion mm. is essential. Mm. So small space, large space, um, where your walkways are, um, the size of the rug, mm. proportions are ex extremely important. Mm. The size mm. of the mm. of the, the painting, mm. um, and a lot of people focus on on color yeah. or on style. Mm. And but if you don't get the proportions right, if you don't get that flow yes. correct, um, you you just it just won't look right. Just won't feel right. So that's where you start and then everything else you build on mm. top. I've heard a difference of opinion here on, um, <laughs> say, the second or third bedroom, where um, people, some people say, put the, put the queen size bed in there because it means you can, you, you can put a couple in there. Whereas others say, no, put a single bed in there because it makes the room look bigger. Yeah. What's the school of thought uh, there? Nobody uses single beds anymore. Oh. So, or, or kings. So I did when I first started 18 years ago. Are you calling me ago. up? No, 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 no. That's a terminology. Just giving you a property style <laughs> opinion, yeah. you know, and, and, what we, and what we're doing now. So now... So what do we call that unit that I just mentioned? <clears throat> what, what do we call that unit? I think what we're trying to say is how do we display the... And how do people want to live? That's really yeah. what we're asking. Yeah. And uh, it's the double beds now that are being used. The queen mm. beds are being used. Mm. Um, I always put in... Um, uh, desk areas and office areas and a place where people can, mm. um, you know, mum can do the um, cooking and look after the children's homework. Mm. But there was always school um, areas for students. Mm. Mm. Now it's essential. Mm. Now you, you wouldn't, you, for, for me it was always essential because mm. I have my children now are all grown up. Mm. So I know how you know, important it is to have all those mm. uh, elements of how, again, how you live, yes. what's convenient. If I live that way, other people do also. Mm. Mm. So how do you fit all those things in where mm. the children can do mm. homework, where you now have to have a space for your home office? Mm. Mm. Extremely important. A lot of people now are using the third bedroom as an office. Yes. They work at home. They yeah. receive clients at home. Yeah. That's been an ongoing trend now mm. for 18 years. Yes, yes. It's now just become essential yeah, normal as part before, of the home. yeah mm. it's, it was absolutely mm. essential now but 18 years ago we mm. were doing that because you know mm. people's lives were changing yes. yeah. you know how we worked at home and how we saw clients and you know there were there people were changing yeah. then yeah now yeah. it's it's all it's all essential now. absolutely yeah, yeah. Kim, what's what's it, opt, optimal time to keep a property on the market if, if it's not selling what, what stage do we take off go you know what just give it a break yeah, um, some people are being really quite proactive, John, and actually putting offers forward to um, sellers. Um, and but we're seeing also that you know vendors are actually sort of a bit hesitant or cautious about mm. accepting the first offer because mm. they're not sure whether or not that's value add mm. um, or the best price for them. Mm. So it could be an indication of you know one to two months in terms of looking at where the buyers are at yes. because you may find a buyer at week eight yes. um, who is the right buyer for that property. Yes. So yeah, so it's all yeah. you know just really sort of being um, you know, just seeing how it flows. Yes. Um, sometimes you could see the, you know, the right buyer come through in the first week. Yeah, yeah. Um, so case by case And it's scenario. connecting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, finally, um, Maggie, just to wrap up, the honeymoon period, um, and we've been seeing this in present time where the banks have been quite lenient, but um, we're at the stage where that leniency is not going to be around for, forever. 
we're finding we can't quite afford the step up to pay the extra that they're going to be asking for. What are our options or do we have any options? So your options are obviously you could refinance to another lender and re restart that 30 year term again. Um, it would add longer time for you to pay off the loan because you're effectively getting a whole new contract, but there are, there are options um, to, to do to yeah. get a better, better cash flow option. Mm. But of course, if you can't afford it altogether, mm. you're gonna have to look at you know, downsizing. So basically just speak to your lender. Speak to your lender. And see what they are. Would you please thank Marina Watson Thank you, John. Marina, how do people find you? Affordable Rooms um, on um, just Marina Watson at Affordable Rooms and they'll be able to find me there. And Magdi Marcos, of course, how do we find you? Um, Google Marcos Advisory and we'll be there. Wonderful. And Kim? KD Property Advisory. Fantastic. Would you please thank our panel today? Good luck with selling your property. <laughs>